All right, good afternoon. Let's go ahead and get started. So this workshop will be presented by Marcel Ramos. He's a senior data scientist at CUNY, City University of New York, and he's a member of Bioconductor core team, probably about five or more years. So Marcel, please take it away. Thank you, Mikhail. Having some technical issues with my mask. Um, thanks everyone for coming, um, and, and I hope you're having a good time at BioC and you had a good lunch. Um, I'll, let's get started with our workshop. I'm going to go to a tiny URL website, so that's um, tinyurl.com slash multiassay workshop. So um, I've been working with Bioconductor for about five years now, um, and I've developed a number of packages, including multi-assay experiment, curated TCGA data, and um, TCGA utils, among others um, that are in the works and are not part of this workshop. But um, this was my first project when I came into the, the Waldron lab, um, and it it was a challenge to um, integrate these different data types that I know nothing, know nothing, knew nothing about, um, and and thanks to the support from the work, working group, um, Vince Carey, uh, Martin Morgan, Levi Waldron, and and others who provided input, um, we were able to get some data structure that would coordinate different data types into a single container um, class. So if you want to access these slides, you can go to this um, URL. It's tinyurl.com slash multi workshop. And we'll be using the orchestra instance, um, which is linked in the third slide. So I have a package down website built from this workshop. And the instance you can see here um, under the orchestra cancerdataside.org uh, website. So I'll, I'll spin that up myself just to um, show you what how um, we could get started. I don't know if I can log in with email. Uh, I'll try my Google account, I guess. Hopefully, um, you all have access to orchestra by now. But this is one of the um, perks of working with someone else's computer. Sorry about that. Well, that's loading. Um, I'll direct you to our our web page for um, the workshop. So this is. The, the main page where I have a description of what we're gonna cover um, as soon as this, if we can get to it. Either, otherwise, I can just show you the, um, the built page. Okay, so what I'm gonna cover are some of the packages that use the multi-asset experiment framework to ship mainly TCJ data, um, and also data from the CBIO portal, um, the CBIO genomics portal. Um, and then I will cover the main data classes that are used throughout those packages, um, mainly summarize experiment, multi-assay experiment, 
and, and ragged experiment. So as, as you may have gathered from, from the um, conference, Bioconductor uses um, a framework that's integrative across packages to um, represent data and analyze data. So um, Summarize Experiment is, is one of those um, major containers that we use to represent and analyze data. And, and I'll show you how to integrate those with, uh, all of those with multi-assay um, experiments. So some of the packages that we'll use are listed here. And I will go over what these packages do in summary, go over some of the classes that um, are involved, and then we'll, we'll try a tutorial and, and um, build a multi-assay experiment from scratch. And we'll, I'll introduce some of the data-centric packages like curated TCJ data, CBioPortal data, and Terra TCJ data, which is a more recent addition for providing um, data sets on the uh, Terra infrastructure. So, and then we'll, we'll, we'll practice a bit on how to work with the multi-asset experiment um, data class, how to manipulate it, and how to carry out some subsetting operations um, and some reduction operations towards the end. So I'm going to go into this tutorial button at the top of the web page. Um, and actually, sorry, it's the reference button. Whoops, it's the main workshop button, sorry. Um, this main workshop button is, is the, um, the meat of our workshop here. Um, and let's, let's get right to it. I also have the link to the Google Slides in case um, you missed that. Um, and we have some, some options for running this workshop. Mainly, we're using the orchestra um, web page. So can you just read again that URL? Yeah. <laughs> this URL? Yeah. Yeah, tinyurl.com slash multi workshop. Okay, so now I have access to the orchestra, so I'll, I'll show you how to um, launch it from there. If you haven't already, I'll just um, search for multi, and then um, on the bottom, obviously we have some people that have beat me to it. Um, so click the launch button and wait that for um, to load. So an overview of the packages here, I have a table. Multi-asset experiment, like I said, is the main container class for handling different types of um, omics data, like mutation data, copy number data, uh, methylation data. Um, so it's really flexible in what you can put into this container. Um, and this multi-asset experiment package is the main um, infrastructure package. Curated TCGA data is the product of a pipeline that we've worked on um, at the Waldron Lab that takes these, the TCGA data sets um, that are mainly um, HG19 data and, and process that data to, a, to some extent, provide some, um, some curation to it and re-exports the data through Experiment Hub. So it, ha it gives you access to about 33 different um, cancer data types and they're all in multi-assay experiment format. So it makes it really easy to take um, TCGA data and import it quickly onto your laptop for um, analysis. Terra TCGA data is our new addition that uses the Terra um, cloud service, um, the Anvil Terra cloud. It, the, the Terra platform has some um, prepackaged TCGA data um, 
it, I think it's also HG19. There are some data sets that are C, um, CRGH38, uh, but that one we're still working on. It, it's not as easy to import as the other um, HG19 data, but it, it allows you to work within that platform and import the data as a multi-asset experiment um, relatively easily. And then CBIO portal data will allow you to pull um, over 300 data sets from the CBIO genomics portal. So we did this in collaboration with um, uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Um, it, so they revamped their API and, and we are able to download their data um, based on what the user requests, what, what, um, what data types they want or um, what studies they're interested in. So, and, and we'll go over um, how to do that um, within this workshop. CCJ Utils, as you may have seen in the sticker, is more of like the, the tools that will help you um, work with the multi-assay experiment container. So I, I like my stickers, um, I think they're pretty cool. But um, so I, I, I only worked on the TCG Util sticker, but you can, you can get the idea of what, what we're trying to do here. The multi-assay experiment, like the integrative um, burger and um, curated TCG data dishes out all of the sliders and TCG Utils helps you um, cook things up. So, um, so that's TCG Utils in a nutshell. And single cell multimodal um, allows us allows anyone who is interested in multi um, in analyzing your data as a multi asset experiment to pull single cell data from um, Experiment Hub. And this is this is a, a project that we've collaborated with other um, labs to have their data sets published and um, made easily available through Experiment Hub. How many people know what Experiment Hub is? Okay, so Experiment Hub is a way to um, publish your data in Bioconductor. So if you're, if you're interested in, um, if you worked on some data and you would like other researchers to make use of it, a good idea is to um, put your data on Experiment Hub so that other people have access to it. Um, so, and, and it works currently on the AWS cloud, so, but we're moving that, making that more um, distributed um, within Bioconductor. Um, but yeah, the gist of it is to um, publish your data on the cloud and have other researchers um, download via the Experiment Hub package. So now I'll describe what the multi-asset experiment data class is. Um, so it's modeled after the Summarize experiment, and Summarize experiment takes um, genomic um, gene expression data um, as a matrix and integrates that into these different aspects of, of the data. We, we do the same thing, but with more, um, with different data types. So you could have um, mutation data and um, expression data in the same container. And, and they could be of any shape uh, or size. Or as you can see on the bottom left here, we have the what we call the experiments. And these are different shapes. So you can see that some of them may have more observations or more rows, and some other data sets may have more columns. And that, that perfectly works fine with a multi-asset experiment. Um, so in the experiments, the representations here are each row is um, a feature, and each column corresponds to a sample. And then the call data aspect of the multi-asset experiment um, allows you to link the data, the sample data with any um, patient data that you uh, may have. And then the sample map, lastly, will coordinate everything in the container so that things are traceable and, and subset and, and makes, makes it easy to subset the, the data in one, uh, one shot.
So CBIO portal data, as I mentioned earlier, um, has this API interface with the CBIO portal um, website. So it downloads data. Um, it doesn't use Experiment Hub because it's mainly um, downloading data from the CBIO portal. Um, but it does use caching, so that helps um, with re-downloading and, and overuse of their service. So um, we're grateful to be able to um, use and download their, their data. And um, the interface, we, we, we take um, a lot of care in, in how we develop our software. We want it to be um, accessible um, and user-friendly. So we have about two main functions for um, CBIO portal data, depending on what, what kind of data you, you're, you want to download. Um, but if you want to see what studies are available via CBIO portal, you should look into the get studies function um, to list all of those. So curated TCJ data comes from the Cancer Genome Atlas and the pipeline. Um, it makes use of RTCGA toolbox, which is um, a package that downloads data from, uh, from uh, I think, GDAC um, uh, directly. And then the Genomic Data Commons is one of those, the package that we, um, we also support um, to some extent. And these are, these are alternative tools to getting TCGA data, but they're not, um, they're not as integrative as um, curated TCGA data. So, so there are many ways to get TCGA data, but our package provides um, an integrative representation that makes it easy to um, get started with your analysis um, pretty quickly. So we have some reference vignettes in this website. If you scroll to the top and go on to the other vignettes, we have the listed studies that are available via the curated TCJ data um, package. And um, we also have an explanation of what omics types are um, provided in, in the package. And here I added some notes about Terra TCJ data. Um, so the main website for um, the Terra platform is app.terrabio. You do need to sign in with your Google account and you do need a credit card because um, it's a paid service. Um, but you can, you can select the latest RStudio and Bioconductor instance, thanks to um, Nitesh, who's been working really hard to um, get those updated, keeping those up to date. So you can use that um, image to um, get started um, and then make sure you authenticate to um, Google Cloud and you can, you can check that with this Anvil G Cloud exists and that, would, that should get you 90% um, of the way there. And then from there you can find TCJ workspaces to list what workspaces have um, TCJ data. So a workspace in Terra is a um, is sort of like an instance that has pre-populated data. So these workspaces have the different TCJ data sets um, preloaded. So you can explore which ones, which workspaces you want to use using this find TCJ workspaces um, function, um, and then start to download and explore um, the data with the um, Terra. TCGA data function. And then we have um, single cell multimodal. So um, single cell has been um, exploded, has exploded in popularity quite recently. And we've, um, we have some collaborators that provided um, SCNMT data sets, 10X multi-ohm data um, for analysis. Um, it includes SeekFish, um, SightSeek, and Scope2, among others. So if you're interested in those data, you can check out the single cell multimodal package. Um, we do provide them in HDF5 format and, and matrix market format. 
And last but not least, we have the TCGA Utils package, which allows you to um, manipulate these uh, multi-asset experiment containers. So here we have a schematic of how all of these um, packages more or less are, are working together. Um, you have the, the cancer genome atlas here, which went through the um, Broad Institute's um, GDAC firehose pipeline, then through our TCGA toolbox, and then through our pipeline um, to process that, and then use multi-assay experiment to um, redistribute the data. Um, and you can see that CBioPortal takes the data from CBioPortal at um, MSKCC hey, and other. Can you mute your mic if you're um, online? Uh, who, who was that? I don't know. Uh, 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 I don't really know how to work the um, WebEx call. Um, yeah, but if I scroll up, that's the top of the screen on, on here. Yeah. yeah, I can't. Yeah, um, if you can hear me, Ping, can you mute yourself? My, my Chinese is not that advanced. That's so strange. Ping, can you hear us? Please mute yourself. Yes. Can you mute yourself? We can hear everything you're saying. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, that was a nice intermission. Um, well, so I'll, I'll continue here and cover the major data classes that are involved. Um, mainly, um, how many people are familiar with Summarize Experiment? Okay, a few of us. Um, so Summarize Experiment um, has the same, a similar structure to multi-assay experiment, right? This one came first. And um, it allows you to have some row annotations that are um, correspond to genomic coordinates. So you have the, the, the features like um, can be genes, right? And you can have the, um, the a G ranges object to represent those, um, the genes. Um, same thing with the call data. You, if you have um, patient data, that's where um, that would go and it has some um, facilities for metadata as well. So this is a major um, bioconductor class, so um, I recommend everyone to get familiar with it. Um, it's used a lot in, in several packages, and that's why um, I think bioconductor is so integrative is because of these data classes, um, uh, like Summarize Experiment, that make it easy to move your data across packages um, in a cohesive way. 
And then more recently, we've, um, we've had the single cell experiment um, data structure, which is similar to the summarized experiment, and it works mainly for uh, single cell experiment uh, data. And then we have RAGID experiment, which is our main data representation for representing uh, copy number data, uh, mutation data, um, such as the, the data that you would find in VCF files um, and other array schema for um, genomic, other ragged array schema for genomic location uh, data. So it's, um, it's a similar representation to G-Range's G list, but it gives you a matrix um, view of the data so that it fits nicely with the requirements for the multi-asset experiment. And um, I didn't mention the requirements for multi-asset experiment, but the, the basic requirements for putting a data class into a multi-asset experiment are that it needs to have dimension names, so you need row names and call names, and you need to, the class needs to have a bracket method so that you can subset um, the data within your um, rectangular um, data structure. So they're, they're pretty simple requirements and, and that's why multi-assay experiment is so flexible even with the new data classes um, such as facial experiment and um, single cell experiment. So more about ragged experiment. Um, we have these different, these main methods for working with the data that's represented as a G-Ranges list. Um, you can take the data and make it sparse or find any ranges that are um, the same across the different samples and, and make those a little bit more compact. Or you can have a window um, of interest of, of, of ranges, a region of interest that you can reduce your data to so that you can um, say if you have a, a set of genes that you want to um, reduce your data um, too, you can use that to um, make, make that more compact. And then lastly, we have a disjoint assay method, which um, splits your data by all of the um, ranges found in, in, the, in the data class. So, this secondary class that we created called the matched assay experiment is um, similar to multi-assay experiment, but the only um, catch is that all patients have to have a sample in each assay. So multi-assay experiment is a little bit more relaxed in that you can have any number of samples per patient, um, but for the match assay experiment, it would require everyone to have at least uh, one sample um, in each assay. So it's good if, you, if you're only interested in people who have an observation in each assay. So, and what I mean by assays are these, these squares, like the, the data types, mutations, um, uh, methylation. So if, if your requirement is to have um, all of your patients have data in all of those data types, then you could use a matched assay experiment um, to represent that. So you could create that by coercion. So you'd use like this as method and, and the name, or you can whoops, uh, construct, use the constructor function on that existing multi-assay um, experiment. So now let's try to, um, let's build a multi-assay experiment from scratch. And one way you can do that is by um, using our interactive demo that um, we have up in the tutorial section on the website. So if you scroll up on the tutorial top page, we have build your first multi-assay experiment. Um, and that this will take you to, it embeds a Shiny app um, that allows you to, um, 
I'm not sure why it grayed out, but it um, looks like it's working. So this Shiny app is, is sort of like a um, tutorial, which is really neat for um, working through um, workflows like this. Um, I'll try to refresh and see if that um, goes away. Okay, so, so as you go through this tutorial, you can learn more about how to work with multi-asset experiment. It has some interactive um, coding that you can do in, in this Shiny app. So here it says uh, we want to use the experiments function to extract or take the experiment data out of our mini ACC data set. So the first thing we would do is load that data set by doing data parentheses mini ACC in quotes and then maybe um, print it. So that should um, run the code. And if not, we'll, we can go to our orchestra session and, and try that there if that's not. Um, so so this, this app connects to our in-house um, Shiny server and um, We've never really tested it for um, a workshop, so um, we'll see if it works or not. Um, okay, so it looks like it's taking a bit, so I'll just um, launch the workshop on Orchestra. Um, the password is RStudio, although that might also have to change with their um, new their new name. Um, okay, so now I'm on Orchestra. I have um, access to all the files on in the workshop. I'm going to go into Inst, Tutorials, CBioPorto, CBioPorto Data. And, and you can see the path here on, on the um, right-hand side. Home, Inst, Tutorials, CBioPorto Data. So I'll try to spin this up. I, hope, I think this um, has... Shiny installed already. Yeah, so this does create um, a pop-up, so just click always allow pop-ups, and then try again. So now we have our little um, app here, directly connected to our orchestra um, instance. So, and I picked the wrong one, sorry. If, yeah, you guys should have told me. This is just a comedy of errors today. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the right one and hopefully things will go smoothly. <laughs> um, okay, so we can run the, um, the code to pull the mini ACC from the package. So this is a, an example data set um, included in multi-asset experiment from the adenocortical carcinoma um, data set from TCGA. So it has a limited number of um, observations in, in the data. And as you can see, this is our, our or now you should be able to see. Um, we have several different assays stored in this mini ACC. So we have RNA um, seek data, uh, gistic, uh, uh, reverse protein um, array data, uh, mutations, and microRNA seq gene um, data sets. So, and and you get a description of what how many rows are in the are are in each data set and how many columns or samples are in each of these. So. Um, we, we say rows and columns because multi-assay experiment is a, is a pretty flexible container, so it doesn't have to be um, genes and samples 
Um, it could be really anything um, that has that those basic requirements, um, the rectangular requirements for the, for the data. Um, so now let's run experiments on the mini ACC data set. So we type in experiments and this has some nice auto completion here that we could use. And then we rerun this code. So now you can see that when you do experiments on the mini ACC, you extract the actual data within the multi-assay um, experiment. So that it kind of like removes the call data because the call data is in another part of the object. So this only gives you um, the data that um, was entered um, for each of those assays. Right, so if you click solution, you'll see that's um, the code. So this is pretty nice and interactive for um, displaying our tutorial here. Um, the next um, part of the, the multi-asset experiment um, container is the call data. So that includes um, phenotype information like survival time and all of those clinical, clinically relevant variables. Um, so it, the interface, uh, we've tried to make it as uh, simple as possible. So if you do call data on mini ACC, that should also, uh, so I guess it doesn't um, keep that mini ACC in memory. So this should work now. So then with, with the extractor function with call data, you'll get to see all of the um, clinical variables like years to birth, vital status, days to death. Um, so it's really easy to work with this, um, the phenotypic data, but also use it to um, divide your data. Um, so say if you're interested in um, a particular um, variable, say you want T4 um, pathology stage, you can do mini ACC dollar sign um, pathology T stage equals equals T4. And this will um, access that column in the call data and find all of the um, patients that had um, T4 stage and you'll see that you get this um, at the bottom here. You get something that you can work with to subset your your data. And we'll go over um, in a in a down the line. We'll we'll go over it and see how to um, subset your data with with these um, logical vectors here. And I think we need mini ACC here as well. So say you want to extract the race variable, you can do mini ACC dollar sign race, and that will um, allow you to pull that that um, variable out. And you could even do a table on that, right? Um, to get a tally of all of the categories in there. Um, And then um, we'll, we have this, sim similar to what Summarize Experiment provides, we, they have this assays function, which allows you to um, extract um, in a slightly different format um, all of the data within the multi-assay experiment. So if we run that, we'll see what that looks like. So this is a simple list. And you can see that it's a list of matrices and maybe we can take the first one just to have a look. I can try head on this maybe. Um, and the first four uh, columns. So you can see that 
um, for that first assay, we have um, the actual data as a, as a matrix. And we can do a class on that just to um, check what, what type of um, data we're working with. So this is a standard matrix. So this is helpful in case you want to um, take this data and um, analyze it with some tool that accepts only matrices as, as input. And then we have the sample map function, um, which is useful for keeping track of all of our um, samples and, and, and um, patients in, in the multi-assay experiment. So we're gonna start off with data mini ACC and then do sample map mini ACC to have a look at the structure. So you can see that this is a graph representation of all of the data that's included in the current multi-assay experiment here. Um, you have the assay name, and this is important. You need to have every assay in your multi-assay experiment has to have a name so that we can keep track and, and make it easy to subset um, by observations or by columns. Um, the second column here is primary, which corresponds to the patient ID in, in CCGA, um, and the call name are the sample IDs here. So most of the time you won't need to be working with the sample map. All of the operations that you do directly on the multi-asset experiment would modify the sample map in the background, but it's good to know um, how to access it in case you do need to um, work with it. So let's try some, some trivia now. Um, what function do you use to extract experiments from mini uh, ACC? So you can shout either one, two, or three. Two. Two, right? Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the one common mistake is that um, you may confuse the class name with the extractor function. Um, here, if you do experiment list in capital, um, that will create, this is the constructor function for the experiment, experiment list class. So make sure you know the difference between the two. One is to construct an experiment list. The other is to extract the actual data from a multi-assay experiment. And lastly, we'll go over the general constructor function. Um, so there's three components uh, for this multi-assay experiment. I, the list of um, experiments, the call data, and the sample map. So we can sort of combine the extractors and the constructor function into one call to make sure that um, we know how to use the multi-assay experiment constructor. Um, so these are the component pieces that make up the multi-assay experiment, right, as, as outlined up here, right? So we simply need to um, say experiment equals here, just so that we're um, clear on what the argument names are here, call data equals, and then um, sample map equals sample map. So if you don't have a sample map, and um, we do provide facilities to create a sample map, um, or if, if your um, patient IDs and your sample IDs are the same, then the, the sample map would get generated automatically, so you don't have to worry about it. But if they are different, then we have some helper functions to allow you to create a sample map so that you could um, pass this to multi-assay experiment and, and, and get started on that. And I think the only thing we need here is the data, mini ACC. 
Okay, so what we've done here is we deconstructed and reconstructed our multi-assay um, experiment, sort of like avocado toast um, at the restaurant, right? You get it deconstructed. Um, so, so we, um, we show that it's quite um, simple to, to um, create a multi-assay experiment from these component um, pieces. Any questions so far? All right. So we have uh, worked on a sort of cheat sheet, cheat spreadsheet, um, where we list all of the functions that are helpful when working with the multi-assay experiment containers. So feel free to reference this um, cheat sheet. It's also available in our, um, in our landing page for the multi-assay experiment repository on GitHub. And it will give you an outline of what, what all these functions do. Um, and, and they're broken down by the categories like constructors, accessors, subsetting. Um, so, um, and then management, like working with um, missing data, finding the complete cases across all of the experiments, finding technical replicates and removing them or, or merging them. Um, intersecting rows across experiments. So if you have um, the same, a same set of the, uh, a, a set of genes of interest that you want to find um, across all of your experiments, you can you can do that. Um, and then we have a helper function, uh, prep multi assay, which allows you to get set up and and um, troubleshoot any. Um, issues that you may come across when constructing the main uh, representation. And then we also have functions to reshape the data. So this is, these are good for um, when, you, when it comes time to plotting your um, results or, or the data that you have. Um, converting it into a long format is usually um, the way to go if you're plotting um, with um, the tools that require that that the shape that shape, and we also have some combining functions like the C function to um, add experiments to an existing multi-assay um, experiment. And we have an example here of how you would concatenate. So if you wanted to um, take the log of a particular um, assay already in the well, mini ACC, you could do that and then add that back to the mini ACC with this, uh, the C function. And this map from argument tells the software that um, this data set is pretty, pretty much, has the same dimension names like rows and columns as the first assay in mini ACC. So it, it saves you time um, so that you don't have to rebuild the sample map yourself, it'll do it for you. And now if you take that mini ACC um, and look at the experiments, you'll see that the new um, assay has been added to the bottom of, of this uh, experiment list. So we looked at experiment list, and those um, metadata. One note about the metadata, it's currently, um, metadata is hard to pin down because it can be varied. So what we use is a, is a, is a simple list to, um, for the metadata, right? So what we have here, we might have like a PMID um, or a source URL, so you can add things to the metadata that are unstructured um, and have that move along with your, um, as, as you go along with your analysis. Um, okay, so 
now let's talk a little bit about curated TCGA data and I want to run these um, interactively so I'll go to the R Studio server or the orchestra platform and what we can do is type uh, help package equals uh, we'll see, I'll say experiment and that will pull up the documentation for the package and then you can click on these user guides package vignettes and um, I think you click on the first link and this will let's see if curated might not be it. Uh, it should be this one. Um, Okay, well, we can, um, I guess, copy and paste here um, or go to the actual source code. Not sure why that's not there, but maybe I'm not looking in the right location here. Uh, okay, so let's go to the, um, I'll pull out the outline here and Go to where we left off here. Sorry for the scrolling. Um, so here we are with um, curated TCGA data. So this is a, an experiment data package um, on Bioconductor, um, and it allows you to pull data from the TCGA um, data that we've uploaded to um, Experiment Hub. So with one line, you can, you can get all of the data that you, you want and, and list it. So first we'll, we'll run library uh, curated TCGA data and then do, um, and then run that, that line that says, um, show me what's available for this cancer type, so that's ACC here. And what you'll, what you'll get is a table of all of the um, data that's available um, for this, this cancer type, and you'll get um, file size overview, how big the data is, like for example, methylation's a um, bit big, and then um, you'll get some more information about what the data types are for each of these. Um, so it allows you to pick the things that you want and leave the things that you don't want. Right? So um, say we wanted this set of assays, you can, you can include them as such and then run this code. So it, what it does, it goes into Experiment Hub and if it doesn't have this already cached, then it will download it from the Experiment Hub uh, service. And then what you get back is a multi-assay experiment. So this is the actual data. We were working with a mini ACC, which is um, a toy data set, but this one has the actual data from TCGA. So you can see that the number of rows are significantly um, increased. And, um, and then, so we got what we requested and it took maybe, I don't know, like 20 seconds to, to get that from Experiment Hub. So it's really um, quick and you can get started with exploring what's in, what's in that um, container. You can do call data ACC and maybe you get like the first one to four columns and you'll see, so we have the clinical data 
as well with the, um, the data sets that you requested. So I think we've come a long way, but there's still um, more ground to cover, right? And um, when we first started working with CBioPorto, um, we had someone at, in the, in the talk that um, we gave, someone was really grateful and they were like, you should have had this when I was doing my PhD. You, you don't know how much um, work I did to clean my data and, and integrate it. Um, so. So we're, we're saving um, researchers a lot of steps by already having everything integrated and connected so that you don't have to spend 80% of the time um, cleaning the data. Um, so, so, it's, um, so I'd say that um, multi-asset experiment is pretty, um, pretty um, useful in that way. Um, and um, it's one of the top 10% Bioconductor, most of the, most used packages in bioconductor, so it, it, it is um, useful, so to some extent. Right? Um, so now let's talk about C Bioportal data. Um, the main, there are two main uh, ways to access data through C Bioportal. Um, one is to get the prepackaged data using C Bio Data Pack. And then the other way is to use the API interface um, to download data. So we make this really easy so that you don't have to um, wrestle with the API. We do that for you. So what you need to do is just know what, what data set you want and download that. Um, and what you could do to look at what data are available is by, um, first of all, load the package. And then we'll do CBio. Yeah, so um, you may see this warning message. Um, the MSKCC team is constantly working on their API, so things change. And I get that. Um, I have put that warning in there so that um, I'm aware of things that are changing. And if I need to modify things, I will do that in the package. So um, if you see that, don't worry about it. Um, the package should still um, work fine. And when we do get studies, you'll see that you'll get a table, a neat little table of all the studies that are provided by the CBioPortal uh, service. So you get their, their, their name and the, um, any publications, um, the, 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 the journal where these um, studies were pu published and some description, um, whether the study is public or not, um, import date. So you have like a lot of um, metadata to work with here, but the, one of the most important ones to look out for is the study ID column, which is what you use to download um, a data set. So we can try this with the, um, the data pack um, so CBio data pack, and we just include the study ID at, in, as the first argument, the cancer study ID, and then run that. It, allow, it asks you if you want to um, reserve a spot to cache your data. We say yes, and then it pulls the data from their um, AWS bucket, I believe. They, they have these data packs in a bucket, so you just pull that in, and then the software does the rest for you. It, it, it coordinates all of the data that are available um, and creates a multi-asset experiment um, for you. So you can see that you have the, the DNA data type, methylation, mutation, RPPA. So these are coming from the CBioPortal um, service. And then we have um, the CBioPortal data function, which is the one that accesses um, the API. So what we can do is um, download this study, URCC. I forget what it's 
um, what that stands for, um, but it should be in our study column. Um, but yeah, you can you can download that data with with a simple one line command. Um, you may include a gene panel of interest um, that are published by MSKCC, or you could provide your own um, genes that you want to um, get the data for. Um, so the CBio data pack gives you everything. This um, CBio portal data function is a little bit more fine grained and allows you only to um, pull the data that you're interested in. So, so it minimizes their, the use of the, the service. Um, so if we run that, you'll see that we'll get two um, assays um, and they're represented as summarized experiment and range summarized experiment object depending on where, the, depending on if the data has some um, ranged attributes um, included with it, like for this mutation um, data type. So now that we have TCGA data to work with, what do we do with it? Um, and this is where um, TCGA utils comes in. Um, it provides a, a number of functions to work with the data that you've downloaded. Some of them are um, converting the row annotations. So if you have um, microRNA and you want to convert that to ranges, you can do that. Or if you have gene symbols, you can um, take those gene symbols and convert to ranges um, with this symbols to ranges function. Or if you have a region of interest, you can use QReduce TCGA to um, narrow down your data to only that, that window. Um, and as I said earlier, um, oh, actually, range summarized experiment is a is sort of an evolution of summarized experiment with um, annotated rows um, with genomic ranges. Um, and they work for um, copy number data sets, uh, mutation data sets. So, so we have examples of how you would do that. You can do that with the ACC data set that we downloaded. Um, and there are some quirks as working with this data, you may have to convert the annotation type. So um, if we do genome, and I don't know if genome is loaded, but you can see that our um, genome here that is um, annotated as, uh, I think this is either, I think it's NCBI, um, but you can, we do some, some um, we jump some hoops to make this all work because when you do Q-reduced TCJ, the, the annotations have to match um, in terms of the genome. So this is just some steps that we do to make that, um, that work. And um, we have to load the package to use this function. Um, so if we do something like Q reduce TCGA, we'll um, take um, your mutation data um, and use some some packages, annotation packages like org.hsbgbb, um, and um, convert those um, row annotations and um, compress to only the window of. Um, I think these are only um, genes, so you would have those um, those rows in relation to those those genes. Um, same thing with uh, symbols to G to ranges. You convert as well. Um, Simplify TCGA sort of does everything in in one go, um, and. And then we have some, some functions to help you um, learn more about what's in the data, especially if you're using um, TCGA. So we have this sample tables function, which tells you what are the um, sample types included in the data. So these are 
um, these TCGA codes. Um, we can pull up a, or not. Okay. Um, someone's working against me behind me. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so we have this this sample types table that's included with the package that gives you that those definitions for those codes. So you have zero one for primary solid tumor, zero two for recurrent solid tumor. So you can see that in this CNV SNP data set, we have tumors um, normal. That's ten. Ten are normals. Um, and 11 are also normals. So you may only want to look at tumors or you may want to compare tumors and normals. Um, depending on what you want to do, um, there are functions to help you um, either split things or remove things. Um, in this case, if you want to compare tumors to normals, you can use split assays and the codes um, in that, that you want to split by. Um, and this is not the right. And then you'll get some warnings if things are not consistent. Um, but the point of this is to separate those um, samples easily for you so that you can um, run your analysis um, comparing tumors to normals or um, whatever you need to do. Um, and you can see that now these um, assays are annotated with those, those codes um, at the beginning of them, if, if they're available. For that first assay, there were some, there were about five samples that were normal, but for the other ones, there, there weren't any, so that you only get the, um, the tumor um, samples. And we also have, um, We also have TCGA um, primary tumors. So this function will allow you to just, depending on what kind of uh, cancer you're working with, only pull out the tumor samples from the data. So if you run that, it will remove everything else and give you only the um, tumor samples. So that's one um, function to keep in mind. And then we did some curation with molecular subtypes in TCGA, and that we included that data with curated TCGA data. So not every um, cancer data type has these annotations, but some of them. And you can look at what data, data types or what cancer um, disease codes have um, some subtype information by doing get subtype map. Um, so it gives you a, um, a map of all of the columns that are associated with um, these subtypes so that you can um, use that data and um, take a look at what kind of um, histology is present in those samples. And then we also have facilities for working with um, barcodes um, in, so if you've, if you've used the genomic data commons before, you know that they've um, switched mostly to um, universal um, identifiers or UUID to, um, so if you have something like that and you want to convert to a TCGA barcode, you could do that. Um, and this will give you a data frame or table representation of that UUID and the submitter ID, which is the um, patient ID in um, TCGA. So it's, it's good if you um, come across a file and um, you don't know, or if you're downloading files and you don't know what their TCGA ID is, you can look that up by either using the file name or the um, universal ID to translate um, those to something that um, is more specific 
for the TCGA project. Yeah. Um, this is a function in, so the question was, is, it's a built-in function. It's, it's a function in TCGA util, so it's designed to work with TCGA, so we don't include it in multi-assay experiments. It's in TCGA util. And if you have an ID, you can translate to, to um, TCGA barcodes or vice versa. So some of these are case IDs, like these UUID, and others are file IDs. You can, you can also translate file IDs, um, and you'll see that it's a barcode with, um, that corresponds to a sample. And you can do that the other way around um, from barcode to